Hello everyone, I'm Eric D'Souza and welcome back to Prime Writers of Canada as we interview the nominees for the Awards of Excellence of 2022. Today I have with us Linwood Barkley who's been nominated for the best crime novel for his novel, Find You First. Um, Linwood, uh, you said that when I asked you to do this, you said, okay, let's do it now. So, <laughs> it's a thriller, it's a thriller even interviewing you. <laughs> um, I want to ask you first, uh, just in very general terms, uh, all your novels as I read them, they're always completely unique, very different to what uh, other people write, but also very different from what you read, wrote in the past. It's always very creative. So I was wondering how you come up with your ideas. Well, you know, I kind of, I'm always in some kind of interesting situations. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm, I'm, you know, I always figure that I need one great what if every year and I think it's floating out there somewhere in the ether and I'm just waiting to grab it, hoping it's going to come. And so I'm always looking for what I think is, a, and some people call them high concept, but I don't think of them that way. I just, I'm thinking, waiting to, for some kind of really different idea. And, and, uh, and when I have one that hits me that I think, yeah, I, I think can, can be expanded into a hundred thousand word novel that has to, there's enough going on that led to that sort of what if situation then and if i can figure out how it happened um you know what it is that actually happened in the background once i have that sorted out then i'm then i kind of get going and sometimes these ideas just come out of nowhere sometimes they're in part inspired by the news sometimes an idea in the news will not be what the book is about but an idea in the news will trigger a different idea at which becomes the book. You know, I was talking recently to someone about elevator pitch, my book about a guy who kills people by sabotaging elevators. And that idea came, I was listening to the news about all the, the high condo towers being built in Toronto and how they didn't have enough elevator inspectors to keep track of the, the you know, the developments. They had been a problem, but they just needed more inspectors. And I heard that an item on the news and it's the idea was there. What if you had a guy who was getting rid of people by sabotaging elevators? So, so you never know when they're going to where they're going to come from or and whatever. But I just I just hope and pray that there'll be at least one a year. <laughs> well, I can guess the news story that influenced Find You First, but uh, I think if we talk about it, it might reveal too much, right? Well, there's a sort of side story that uh, takes a while to get into that that is inspired by a big story of the news, which is not too much of a giveaway, which is the Epstein the business. But the real start of the story, I find you first, was there was an article in a, in a, a magazine, it was a kind of a picture, a photo essay of someone who had uh, managed to track down uh, the half siblings, all they were all product of the same sperm donation. So it was very much a human interest story of going around the country and saying, you know, you're my half sister, you're my half brother, doing pictures about them and so forth. And, and I looked at that and I thought, how could that go horribly wrong? And that was that was the starting point for Find You First. The other aspect that didn't come in until I spent a lot of time thinking about how I was going to do that book. Um, well, school teachers will tell us that plot and theme are two very different things. Um, as I've, I've been, especially your most recent work, I've started to guess that maybe you have a theme of beware of technology, beware of social media. There's always an edge to it, like you mentioned, elevator pit. Uh, am I just reading into it, or is it something you want to discuss? Well, I don't think it's, I don't honestly think that it's something that I give a lot of sort of conscious thought to, like, oh, I have, I have, I have something I want to say here, so the theme for this book is going to be this. You know, for me, books always really start off with, as I say, a what if or a situation. That doesn't mean, however, that I don't have access to grind. And, and so once I get into a book, I think, yeah, here's things that, certain things that really piss me off that are going on in the world or whatever, and I'll find a way to weave a bit of commentary or something into the story. I mean, some of my books, more than one, I think, have sort of lamented the decline of the newspaper newspaper industry, where I spent three decades. Or, you know, uh, the elevator pitch also tied into the kind of polarization, the sort of political polarization that's going on. You know, of this sort of extreme right and 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 left on the left and so forth, and how everybody's at each other's throats. That's Another thing, and, and all the whole business disinformation, things like that, which trouble me a great deal. So those things may find a way of, you know, getting into my books here and there. Uh, I was wondering then, uh, 
if you're, anybody's watching this sort of real time or around the time uh, that we're filming it, we have to wait about two more weeks to get our hands on uh, Take Your Breath Away. Yes. Uh, was, there any, was there any access to grind in that one? Oh, boy, let me think. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think Take a Breath Away has, in particular, there's a couple of minor ones. There's a bit of a sort of, the, the pandemic is a kind of, has a small role to play in that book uh, because it takes place presumably after it's happened. And um, there's a couple mentions about the sort of anti vaster conspiracy types and so forth. There's a little bit of that slipped in, but it's not, it's not really a book where I'm sort of pounding away at anything in particular. It's just meant to be a really good puzzler turn pager. Excellent. Uh, I know I have. I, mean, I have to say turn pager. I think it's called a page turner. But anyway, that's just <laughs> I'll just attribute that to the medication, whatever I'm on. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I I, um, I found it before I, the first chapter of uh, Take Your Breath Away. Is, I found it online. And uh, I'd recommend anybody to read it. It's a very strong first chapter that just makes you, I want to read the rest of the book. Now I have to wait two more weeks before Amazon delivers it to me. So thank you very much for taking the time out to uh, speak with us today, Linwood. It was a pleasure. Oh, it was a pleasure. Nice to see you. Thank you, everyone. Take care.